Yay! You made it to the last video in the series! This one is about the lip salve, and it didn't exactly go according to plan. Stay tuned. I'm Melissa Case. I've been sewing historically inspired costumes for nearly a decade, but I'm still pretty new to the 18th century. With my limited experience, I'm going to test out three recipes and a hairstyle from American Duchess's Guide to 18th Century Beauty. Just remember, this is a review, not a tutorial, because... I might not be doing this right. Let's jump right in. You'll need cocoa butter, sweet almond oil, alkanet root, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and a small jar. You'll also need cheesecloth, a scale, a bowl that can take heat, and a pot or a double boiler. Oh, and a stovetop and your American Duchess beauty book. Now, I'm not sure if my expectations were wrong or what, but this didn't really go how I expected it to. I kind of expected the end result to be a bit more solid. As you'll see later, it does come across as kind of oily. Again, this might have been user error on my part, so I don't want to discourage you from trying it anyway. Just know you're probably not getting homemade chapstick. I actually made this one twice, and what you're seeing is the second attempt. It came out more or less the same both times. I have to admit, I really enjoyed the process of making the lip salve. I enjoy cooking, and that's very much what this felt like. I also really enjoyed watching the alkanet root change the color of the mixture. Just a quick note, no matter how dark it looks, the salve itself will be much lighter when applied. I used the cheesecloth as a makeshift strainer. It just uses a small amount, so I have plenty of cheesecloth for later. As you can see, it's all liquid. The instructions said to let it cool overnight. I left the first one I made out and the consistency never changed. This time, I popped it in the fridge for a couple of days. It did thicken up a bit, but after a day or two outside the fridge, it turned back to the liquid consistency. So I have my finished lip salve here and I'm a little concerned. It looks a little bit more liquidy than I expected. I was expecting to be a little bit more solid than this, but maybe I just had wrong expectations. I don't know. It's a really pretty color, at least. I still have rouge on my finger from the earlier video. It tastes like almonds, which really shouldn't be a surprise at all. It's very oily. Possibly because it was mostly oil, and possibly because it might not have set properly. Alright, the instructions say that if you want to darken it up a little bit, you can add a little bit of rouge. So let's try doing that as well and see how it looks. I 
Okay. Not bad. It's pretty color. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm dripping. I'm going to say that the lip salve was probably my least favorite of the recipes to do, but I still think it turned out pretty nice. Uh, I feel like I can't give a proper review for this one because I'm still not convinced that it's supposed to look like this. But it looks nice. It feels nice. And what more can you want? All right, I'm going to wash my hands and then finish getting dressed. First, I tied on a pocket that I was supposed to embroider, but never got around to. With this ensemble, I wear a red silk taffeta petticoat, which ties around my waist in the front and in the back. In case you're wondering, yes, in my rush, I forgot the bum pad. I'll realize it shortly. Even though this is called a petticoat, it serves the same function as an underskirt in that you're actually supposed to see it. Next, I put on my Italian gown. It has a fitted back, which goes down to a surprisingly low point. My gown is made of cotton, and it's pinned close at the front. I pin one side directly to my stays to act as an anchor. Then I pin the top closed, and I go right to the bottom, and I pin it directly to my petticoat to keep it in place. I then add more pins in between, anchoring the ends of the pins in the top layer of my stays. Is this the accurate technique? Beyond the use of straight pins, I have no idea, but this is the way that works for me. For a little more decoration, I like to pin a ribbon bow to the front. Time for jewelry! I bought this set on sale from Dames a la Mode last year, and I love them! And I just realized I forgot the bum pad. Here I am, trying to decide if it's worth getting undressed and redressed. A decision has been made. One moment, please. Here it is! The bum pad. As with all historical costuming, you need the right foundation to get the right silhouette. And the enhancement from the bum pad really helps with that. I could have cut this part, but I ultimately decided to keep it in because I think it's important to show that mistakes happen. And even if you don't do things in the right order, it can still turn out okay. One last piece, the apron. This probably could have been put on earlier, but oh well. I tie it on under my gown and I pin the bottom of my bodice to the apron and my petticoat to keep it anchored. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. A special thanks to those who watched all four videos in this series. If you didn't, I have a playlist in my description along with a link to everything I used in this video. Let me know what your favorite product was in the comments. I'll see you next time with a video that actually has something to do with sewing. Bye!